Welcome to the Voices for Voices podcast, sponsored by Redwood Living. Thank you for joining us today. I am Justin Allen Hayes, founder and executive director of Voices for Voices, host and humanitarian. You can learn more about Voices for Voices on our Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube channel at Voices for Voices, and also on our website, voicesforvoices.org. Voices for Voices is a 501c3 nonprofit charity organization that survives solely on donations. So if you're able to, please consider heading over to voicesforvoices.org to help us continue our mission and the goal and the dream of mine to help 3 billion people over the course of my lifetime and beyond. Or you can also send a donation to the mailing address of Voices for Voices at 2388 Beckett Circle, Stowe, Ohio, 44224, USA. Or we're also on the Cash App at Voices for Voices. Are you or somebody you know looking for a volunteer opportunity? If so, you can reach out to us today via email at president at voicesforvoices.org. Now I founded Voices for Voices to provide a platform for folks to share their stories with others as we work to break the stigma around mental health, accessibility, and disabilities, while also helping people get the help they need and also helping them prepare and or transition into the workforce with the Voices for Voices Career Center, where we connect talent with opportunity for both job seekers and employers alike, from coast to coast and in every industry and job level. And who can forget about merchandise? The Vo Voices for Voices merchandise shop is now up and running at voicesforvoices.org forward slash shop where shipping is always free, and again, all donations are 100% tax deductible. Now, before we get into today's episode, I want to also give an announcement for our third annual A Brand New Day Gala Fundraiser, which this year is going to be held on October 13th, 2023, from 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. at the Leona Ferris Lodge, and the address is 5027 Stowe Road in Stowe, Ohio, 44224 USA. In a previous episode of our podcast, we had our keynote speaker for this year's event, Dan Flowers. He's the president and CEO of the Akron Can Regional Food Bank. We're also going to be giving away and presenting this year's Voices for Voices Ambassador of the Year Award to the Honorable Judge Allison Bro, who works with the Summit County Court of Common Pleas and founded the Hope Court for individuals with felonies. We're gonna have music, we're gonna have artwork, we're gonna have American Sign Language interpretation from students of the Kent State University uh, program that join us from time to time on the podcast, raffle baskets, and much more to support members in the community who are battling addiction, mental health, and accessibility. And lastly, tickets for that fundraiser are gonna be $150 for an individual ticket and $750 for a table of six. We hope to see you there, and tickets can be found and purchased on Voices for Voices Dot org. Now I'm very excited to welcome in today's guest. She is, I believe, in Durham, Ontario, Canada. She is an actress, producer of That Hunting Girl, creator of Just Hunt Inc., and keynote speaker. And I can't forget, she is also one of today's most popular faces of the outdoors. The Canadian hunter, and U.S. hunters follow her adventures with Just Hunt, Inc., including her new TV series, 
That Hunting Girl with Amanda Lynn Mayhew, which airs on the Sportsman Channel in Canada. So today's guest is Amanda Lynn Mayhew. Thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having me. This is exciting. As I actually was just through Ohio a couple weeks ago. Yes, yeah, you're definitely in a busy season from what I, I've seen with trade shows and, and being out and about. Uh, for our listeners, our viewers, to get a little bit of a level set about your story, uh, would you maybe talk a little bit about kind of the beginning of where you are, are today, what got you involved, and what what things were happening that kept that career continuing and, and now being uh, a mainstay on, on TV? Well, um, if we go back to when I was born, <laughs> <laughs> I was born and raised in the hunting industry. So I was born and raised hunting and fishing with my parents in a small remote town in Northern Ontario and kind of grew up that way. When I hit my mid twenties, I was diagnosed with Graves disease and I went into a big slump and they fed me all kinds of different medications to try to to um, to reset my thyroid. And your thyroid is in your neck and it's kind of your, your brain of your body. And I didn't feel comfortable taking all of these different pills and, and I just kind of didn't feel like myself. So what I had done is I was watching an infomercial and it so happened that Chuck Norris was using the Total Gym and uh, it, looked, it looked fun. And so I had gone to uh, Walmart actually and bought a total gym and I changed my life. I started bodybuilding, I changed my appearance, I changed my strength. I was dedicated to getting rid of all of those medications and just being as strong as I could be for what I wanted to do. And I didn't want to feel like a zombie anymore and I didn't want to feel tired and fatigued. So I did that and within doing the fitness and the bodybuilding and whatnot, I was still out there hunting and fishing and doing all of the outdoors things that I love, but I was doing it with more energy and more like oomph and, and it, it made me feel better to connect my fitness with the outdoors things that I did. In the meanwhile, raising three boys pretty much on my own and then I don't know, like from being in the spotlight in the media with fitness and, and doing different interviews and doing different charity events, which I've done my whole life for progeria, for a mask, for all different types of rare diseases, and then creating my own fitness magazine and then pulling the outdoors into that fitness magazine. And then social media appeared and the outdoors industry was noticing that, hey, there's this girl, she's out there, she's hunting and she's fishing and she's doing all these things. She's got her kids involved. Um, let's do something with her. So then it rolled into being an ambassador for Cabela's and Bass Pro and, and just being involved more in different publications. And then all of a sudden, um, a network in Canada contacted me during a SHOT Show convention in Vegas in 2016 and they wanted to put me on TV and I didn't want to be on TV. Um, that was very nerve wracking, but I said, okay, let's try it. And it was very well received being a female in the outdoors now on network television. And it just kept rolling from there. And then including all of the educational aspects of what I do, um, the girls really wanted to get out there as well. So it was inspiring more women to get outdoors and so I created a bunch of outreach programs which is range days and take me hunting and take me fishing and now here I am on Sportsman Channel still doing the same things that I was born and raised doing and just expanding on knowledges and experiences and opportunities to give those to others and to myself. Fantastic. Uh, maybe you can talk about maybe one of your more recent uh, experiences. I. I uh, was able to see on, on social media uh, that had you and the, an alligator involved. Maybe you could just walk our audience and viewers through that, because that, that was just awesome to see that. So I was asked to speak at the Safari Club International Convention in Nashville this year, which is very, very humbling and honoring to be included in such a huge event. And so I decided that I was going to drive. And so I, I drove to Nashville, I did the speaking engagement. It was just an incredible event. And it was really cool to be recognized as a Canadian hunter in the States 
And I didn't even realize I had such a huge following in the States, but people waving on my way down to Nashville and honking and stopping me at gas stations and such. Uh, then I decided to just continue on to Florida and go on a vacation. Yeah. But I guess I don't know how to have a vacation because <laughs> right. I always find something to do. So I had done some deep sea fishing mm-hmm. and um, those were captured for the TV show. And I got a hold of a couple of buddies down in Florida and we went alligator hunting. Mm-hmm. And as something that I didn't know I really wanted to do until I actually got there. And then I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. <laughs> and uh Yeah, it was incredible. You go into this beautiful compound and uh, I've never really been to a place quite like this. I'm mostly a do-it-yourself hunter and um, they they set you up with everything that you need to know. You sign your life away and off you go and you, 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 you go into this compound with alligators everywhere. And I mean hundreds and hundreds of them. And the guide will reel in or cast a rod. It's got a big treble treble hook on the bottom of it with a heavy weight he gets the gator he gives you the rod to you you reel it in so you're fighting this alligator mm-hmm. with everything you have and then you reel it in and then you hand your rod back over to the guide and the guide gives you a firearm mm-hmm. and you harvest your animal and then you pull it up and off you go so i ended up harvesting an eight foot about 100 pound alligator my first gator and it was just really exciting and thrilling. And through all of this that's happening and going on and reeling and shooting and pulling him up on shore, there's alligators everywhere. And uh, I, I, I really wanted something really epic to, yeah. to um, have a memory of the alligator, not just the, the tan hide and the Euro Mountain and eating it or whatnot. I wanted a picture. <laughs> so my, my parents are both passed away. And um, I have a little bit of crazy in me because you only live life once. And once I started, you know, doing all of these um, creative opportunities or wild things or whatever you want to call them, I I wanted to get in the water with the alligator and kind of have this epic picture with me in the water and this alligator. And my my guide thought that I, you know, kind of lost my my marbles and he's like well you know what if we're gonna do this we're gonna do this it's kind of an 80 20 maybe 70 30 ah whatever 50 50 let's do it so he got into the water first and this water is a pond with over 400 alligators in there and he got in there he stepped down put the alligator on the log and then he you know let's go let's go let's do this let's do this in a hurry and the cameraman is kind of like okay (laughs) what is happening here and um The guy was telling the cameraman, you know, watch for alligators. Well, we got the picture. We got the video. It's very humorous. And once we got out of the water, a couple of alligators had raised up kind of where we were standing. So, (laughs) Oh, my gosh. That's incredible. The story is awesome. And I invite everybody to to, to check that that, that portion out. Um, For uh, we also have uh, students and, and individuals that are looking for careers and might not know what way to turn or maybe they're being closed off and being told well this is how you have to do it and this is the way we've always done it this is the way our family's done it um, what type of advice or recommendations because I, I like your your outset uh, you know talking about you know we only live once obviously you're doing as much safety around that that living once but just having that creative space spirit and sometimes in today's day and age that sometimes gets lost and I think it's very refreshing for somebody like you to share that Um, so maybe you can give some advice or some thoughts of things that people can do to test out to see if they like certain things well there's a couple of different things so for me I I have sort of an itinerary of what I plan to do during the year but then sometimes it just goes offside so um if if it's in your heart and you feel it in your guts just just do it um obviously take safety measures into into you know like think about what you're doing safely but don't hold back if you have a dream or a passion or something you want to try there's always going to be somebody out there that's going to help you or put you in the or like put you in the right direction, and for me, I create those opportunities for people. And 
I had one lady who wanted to go bear hunting. She has a rare blood, uh, rare blood cancer. Wow. And she wanted to go bear hunting and she never thought that she could. And so I took her and I gave her that opportunity and she succeeded and it's inspiring. And I don't think um, the worst thing you're ever going to hear in life <laughs> is no. Yeah. So if you can think of any question or anything that you want to do and you're either going to get 50% yes or 50% no, if you can handle being told no, then there's, then try it. Just, just, just go and do it. And my dad always said, if you want to do something, then just do it. Just do it. Just try to do it. And if you need a stepping stone or a, a helping hand, then there's always going to be somebody there that will definitely help. Fantastic. Uh, and, and so the just do it and the just hunt, did that have any, any, uh, anything to do with it, with the thought process? And, uh, no. No? Um, I, so growing up, like, people were always asking me, what are you doing? I'm just hunting. What are you doing? I'm just hunting. What are you going to go do? I'm just going to go hunt. So it was just, I created my company way back in like 20, I started saying I was just hunting in like 2008, mm -hmm. but I created a company in 2015 because it was, it just made sense. I just yeah. hunt. And my dad um, was watching kind of all of this from the sidelines. And he, I would ask him like, should I, should I, should I? And he was always saying, well, just go do it. Just do it. Just do it. Yeah. And so finally, you know, like even in my birthday cards, he would <laughs> sign, I love dad, just do it. And oh. uh, yeah. So now um, it's it's something that my friends will say if I'm like having second thoughts about something. They're like, oh, your dad would say <laughs> just do it. So now I just do it. Yeah, you just do it. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. I don't think about the consequences um, financially or um, how tired I'm going to be at the end of the adventure or anything like that. I go and I get it done and then I figure it all out after. So how, how do you manage all that you do for your, your company? I know you have help on the, the TV side with, with uh, trade shows uh, and the, the equipment and the merchandise and the setup. How, how, because that could seem overwhelming to someone's like, oh my gosh, like I could do this I can, on my phone or I, I can, try to start on TV show, but when it comes to you know, doing a trade show, that that's, you're really getting into it there, that it, it, a lot goes into the designing and the, obviously the traveling, making sure you can get what you need to get there before the show starts, not after. Um, but can you maybe walk through some of those types of th things? So 100%, 95% of it is all me. So it's all me, it's me designing, me, um, I design all my clothes, all my clothing line, what the booth is going to look like. I do everything myself. I tag all the clothes. I price the clothes. I do everything. When it comes to the actual setup of the trade show, yeah. then I have um, a team. So I have the Just Hunt Ambassador team. Okay. And they're, I have them spread out across Canada. So it doesn't matter which province I'm doing a trade show in. I always have some help that's gonna, that is going to come out. But um, yeah, Toronto's the biggest show and we have a team of 10. Wow. And so we have somebody that runs the cash, is always looking at inventory, fixing clothes, talking to people. And we have people in the ambassador team that have uh, participated in either range days, take me outreach, whether it's hunting or fishing. So when people come into the booth, that if I'm not available because I'm signing autographs mm -hmm. or talking to someone else, they're versed in what the programs are, are like what they include and how you can sign up for them. So I have a really strong team when it comes to the trade shows. When it comes to filming, I have sometimes an ambassador or two will join me on one of the adventures to help film and produce the shows. But for the most part, it's, yeah, it's all me. It's kind of crazy. I think I need to hire some people. <laughs> no, but I think that that's great that you share that because, uh, I know some students in, in, in classes that I've taught, they sometimes think that, well, they're just going to have a team to do everything and they're just going to show up. And that is probably farther from, from the truth. And to hear somebody like yourself, very successful, known, a celebrity, and you're doing, like you said, 95% of it, uh, you have to be to you have to be totally invested from like the physical side, the emotional side. That there's yes. no two ways around it. That if if not, then the thing, the the company, the the brand, it, it's not going to be able to to advance. Is that safe to say? 
it, it, that's exactly okay. it. And I, um, I like getting other people involved in some of the, the things that have to be delegated out. But at the same time, I like to make sure that this is, this is my thought. This is how I want it to look. And this is my company. So I'm the one that's responsible for the outcome and, and what, whatever, whether it's a hat I designed or a shirt or an event or whatnot. I do have a lot of help when it comes to the actual event, but in the organization, the design of it and what I want from people to take out of it, that's all me. And um, where was I going with this? I, I can't remember. <laughs> I'm sure it'll come back to you at, at, at some point. Uh, so I, I, I see the, the cross around your neck. How, how important is uh, your, your faith to kind of watch what you've done, what, what you do uh, to help maybe give you an added boost? Uh, like, yep, like you said, the just do it from, you know, your dad would say to that, that thought process of just knowing that there, there is guidance coming from a higher level. So the cross around my neck is actually my dad's ashes. Oh, okay. I'm sorry about that. No, it's okay. (laughs) I've always worn a cross around my neck. Um, I have a cross on my Yeah, I saw that. I believe that, um, I don't know how to talk about this. I've never been asked that before. I believe that when you give, you get in, in everything in life. And I believe that the more people you help, the more it's, it's kind of like a karma thing. Yeah. And I believe like, I can tell you this incredible story that would, it's going to be a part of the TV show that's coming out. And my sister told me at the end of it, she said, the Holy spirit is more powerful when two people pray at the same time. And I believe in that. I believe like my mom passed in 2016 before the TV show ever started. Mm. And my dad just passed a year ago to be tomorrow. And I can talk to them and, and I don't know what that sounds like to people viewing this, but when I'm in the bush, when I'm in a tree stand in a ground blind, fishing on a boat, whatever, I talk to my parents all the time. And even when they were alive, I talk to my grandparents. I, I talked to people that were a part of, my heritage. My grandfather was a huge hunter. I have inherited all his firearms. And those are the ones that I use when I'm out hunting and they answer me and they may not answer me like, yeah, Amanda, I know what you're talking about. They answer me in what I'm, what I am thinking and and how I see a conclusion in in my hunt or my fishing expeditions. Uh, December, my first muzzleloader hunt, um, we didn't see deer all week, me and my buddy, Rob, and I'll, I'll tell you the story as compressed as I can, yeah. but my dad's name was Alexander Frank and okay. his dad's name was Frank. And we were hunting with his uncle, Alex oh. and his uncle, Alex got a deer on the Wednesday and we hadn't seen any deer all week. And on the Friday we were being a little bit silly <laughs> and, um, Rob's dad had passed away three years ago from the same thing my dad had passed away from and glioblastoma which is brain tumor and uh so we got out of the truck and we turned the video camera on and he's like okay dad frank let's get some deer out on this field it's amanda's last day you know let's see what we can do and i kind of shoved him a little bit and i'm like wait a second if we're if we're if we're praying you know to our dads for some deer and you're praying for doe you know dad alexander um could you send me a big buck and i'm gonna (laughs) <laughs> I'm going to, you know, I want a big deer and I'm going to, I'm going to harvest him at 4.03 PM. And Rob's like, well, why 4.03? And I'm like, I don't know. It was just a number I chose. <laughs> yeah. I actually texted my son at 4.02 uh, and we were in this big blind. So big window in the front side windows. Rob was looking out that window here and I texted my son at 4.02 and I put my phone down on the floor and I looked up and I'm like, are you for real? Oh. It was 4.02 and there was a deer on the field. I didn't know what it was mm-hmm. yet because it was kind of behind a tree. So I elbowed Rob and I'm like, you're not gonna believe this. And he's like, well, calm down. I'm like, calm down. I don't care that there's a deer on the field. It's 4.03. Like I called it to the minute. And then that we're telling my sister, look, I, I harvested him and called my sister and, and whatnot. And I told her the story. And that's when she said, the power of the Holy Spirit is stronger when two people pray at the same time. 
that that's powerful. Yeah, you, no two so, ways, but that that is amazing. That, so that, yeah, that, that happened. Uh -huh. So and and when you tell that story to other hunters and other people in the industry who have had similar stories of losing their loved ones, they have similar stories. So it just goes to show that there is somebody out there listening. There is a higher power, and it 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 it's for real. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, helping others, that, that's what, a lot of what I, I try to instill and talk, talk about uh, with, with my organization. And, and it sounds to you that it's, the, it's very much the same because you, you, you talked about the story about taking uh, the, the one lady uh, bear hunting and she never thought she would be able to do it and how that made you, you feel inside. Uh, oh, so how, so good. How, how do how do those things make you feel like uh, that keep you going? Is that a little bit of the fuel that keeps you you going when you have an experience like that? You're like, yep, this is what I was meant to do. Oh, for sure. When Kathy and I were sitting in that tree stand and we were sharing our experiences, and she had um, had a conversation with her grandfather who is long past, and he had seen a cardinal, and there's all these little signs, and then. The, the, and then it happens and the, the animal comes out and the trigger is pulled and, you know, the tears are flowing and, oh, thank you. And, you know, watching the smile and, and, and watching that person be so, you know, like, wow, this really happened. And yeah. that is, it's like, I, I've shot so many bears and so mm. many big game animals that it's almost more exciting for me to mm. see someone else succeed and to see someone else go through what they've wanted to do and be successful at it and be happy about it and proud of themselves and know that they could do it and now she can go out there and she could go bear hunting on her own she doesn't need me because she she learned everything that she needed to yeah great uh just to get a, a high level i, I don't want any, any specifics but for somebody who has thought about shooting a, a tv show uh just everything that go, goes into it, like you said, you have your calendar for, for the year, just of, okay, well, it's 2023 and it's this date. And so, you know, you have these things coming up in their location. So you have to get there. How are you going to travel? Who's going to help? And, and all those things. Uh, I guess, how many different adventures do you have to go through? And maybe this is a, a moving number, depending on how what actually happens uh, for a, a season. Is it exactly the amount? Because I think sometimes people think like, oh yeah, they go and do one, they go shoot it, they plan to do it, and it's a perfect day. And what's gonna <laughs> and that animal is gonna come out right at that at that time, and, and it's gonna yeah. happen. Uh, can you talk about a lot of that, the work that goes into that, the preparation, and then. Uh, and the time that it takes to actually go through what a, an episode gets condensed down into, all that. Wow. Um, it depends which animal that you're hunting for. A uh, fishing episode can usually be done in one day. Okay. Uh, the alligator hunt was it was done in one day. But, I mean, that was a compound, and, and, and it was you know, it was set up a lot differently than what I'm used to. Mm -hmm. But, for an example, when we do the moose hunt, we're usually gone for seven days. And we set up a camp and there's usually a group of us between okay. six and 11 people. Um, and everyone kind of grabs a camera and does their own thing. And sometimes we don't even get an animal. Mm -hmm. It's about the adventure. It's about the camaraderie of being out in the outdoors together. Uh, some shows you can do, it just all depends. I can do a deer episode in, you want about 10 hours mm -hmm. of footage a day gotcha. give or take because then you get to grab all the highlights and make a good story mm -hmm. and my my show is different and has been recognized mm -hmm. for that because i'm not just out there hunting right. but i'm telling a story and i'm sharing a story with you and it, it it just like me and my one girl jenny she'll jump in the truck with me and last year we drove all the way to the yukon and we were gone for a month we were fishing in the Yukon, then we were elk hunting in Alberta, we were moose hunting in Alberta. So it's just, I mean, everyone does it differently. And I don't watch other outdoors TV shows mm -hmm. because I want mine to be who I am and I don't want to take from anyone else. So I just do me and I plan 
my adventures um, as they become opportunities. So um, some the, the going season is usually 10 episodes mm -hmm. and I can, I can get that done. No problem. I'm already four deep in this production year. Okay. And um, I'm actually filming 17 episodes this year wow. and I can bank a couple because I'm mm -hmm. going to Africa and I'm, I'm going to Nebraska and I have all these opportunities that are coming up and I don't want to say no. Right. So I want to go and, and, and another thing too, we started retreats. So I was in Mexico earlier this year and like I said, in Florida. So now we're starting to do these retreats where we can bring other people with us so they can experience the same adventures yeah. and we're filming everything for TV. So it, it now my, my 10 episodes um, are going into 12 with, with, with a 13th, but then I get to bank a couple for the next year. Cause who knows? You know what I mean? That's, Anything could happen. Yeah. And, and I think content is huge by you, you can't create more content. If, if it's ten hour, two 10-hour days, you have 20 hours of footage. You, you can't create 22 hours out of, out of that. You, so to have that amount, and like you said, to be able to bank some for the future, that if you wanted to, you could do bonus episodes in the current yeah. season, or you could wait, wait till next year. But you have that option, whereas if you're just trying to cut it close or exactly a number, and then okay, if something happens and the world gets shut down or whatever, in the first couple months of when your show is going to run in 2024, then, uh, then that could be a little bit of a problem. But the fact that you have uh, those, and I, I love the fact you're doing the retreats. Uh, when, how did that just idea come, come about to bring, bring other people into that adventure with you? It just... Um I don't know. I went to Mexico for the first time and it's beautiful and there's so many things to do. And the villa that I was, it's one of my buddies that, that owns a villa down there. And we were both talking and he's like, you know, why don't you bring a group of girls down and, and you guys can stay here for seven days or whatever, go horseback riding, marlin fishing, uh -huh. sit on the beach, get a massage, like just put a whole package together mm -hmm. and introduce Mexico and Los Cabos to other people and do it as a group and do it, you know, motivational, um, inspirational and, and, and have fun with it. So yeah, we're going to do that. And then fun. the same with Florida, you know, if someone wants to go alligator hunting, they don't know where to start. Yeah. That's I'm right. I'm calling Amanda. That's right. Where <laughs> but you, I'm not getting in the water. You're not getting in the water. <laughs> where did your, uh, your storytelling come from it? Because not everybody's a natural storyteller, uh, and, and a lot go, goes into it besides the, the public speaking part of it. But being able to, you know, share an adventure that, you know, a beginning, middle, end, it, it kind of flows together. How Did that come natural to you? It did, actually. Um, it's funny, because when I was in, in public school, I used to make my mom write me a note saying that I <laughs> didn't want to do public speaking. Oh my gosh. I used to be really shy. Yeah. And um, when they decided that they wanted to do the TV show, I mean, I, I've done interviews on TV and stuff before, but to host my own TV show. And I had a cameraman at first for the first three seasons. Mm -hmm. And the cameraman made me feel really comfortable. And at first, it feels like you're talking to yourself. Yeah. And then you realize, you know what? You're talking to yourself right now but then 2 billion people are going to watch this after. So you want to, uh, I've um, listening to other keynote speakers um, when I do my seminars at trade shows and stuff, I, I study how they talk. When you talk, you want to smile, whether you're on radio, on camera or on the stage, you always want to smile. Um, and the storytelling part of it, I feel like, um, I'm going to pick up the phone and call my mom and say, Oh my God, mom, this is what just happened. And yeah. that's kind of how my storytelling is, is just like, I'm, I'm so excited to share this experience and to yeah. share this story. And I need a beginning, a middle and an end, but it's all natural because it's what's actually happening. Yeah. So there's nothing that's forced. There's nothing that's scripted. It's all just exactly what's happening. And that makes it so much easier to tell the story. It is, and it's refreshing to, to have that uh, without a, a script of, well, this is going to happen. Well, this might happen, this might not. It's, it's everything that goes along with it, and that whole 
experience of even going to a, a concert to watch a band, being able to go backstage and, and just to talk and meet and take pictures, like what all those things are like for a concert goer, you're given that with your experience. And, and I think, um, think I, I know when it, it's actually happening, it's facts, uh, anything can happen. So there could be you know, a myriad of things that can, can happen, but you can still get to that same goal. You can still tell that story, whether the hunt is successful in, in terms of being able to harvest or, or not. Uh, and, and I think that that's what makes things relatable. And it it's like reality TV, but it's not. It's like 10 steps further because it's actually what, what's what's happening. And somebody can picture as I'm sure your viewers do, they, they picture themselves, whether it's you know, getting in the car, getting in the truck, just those types of things. Like, I can picture that, but just starting an episode, being on some reservation somewhere, it's like, they're, how, how do they get there? Do they just, like, show up? Or what goes into it? And I, I think that's helpful. And then especially, like you mentioned with the, the trade shows, that you do get help and in certain areas, but it's authentic. It's it's you that you go through the designs, and maybe that takes a little bit longer. But who cares? It's at the end of the day, it's what you approved, what you want to do, and that's that's what it's all about. When you start a company, an organization, your brand that you have your hands on all those aspects. So it all comes back to you. It comes back to that image that you you wanna you wanna put out there that. You're not just talking, you know, to to yourself or to to the camera. That you are talking, you know, in in in, in people's living rooms and in dorms <laughs> and uh, and and I, that has to be. How does how does that part make you feel? The telling of the story. I know it's natural, but to talk talk to the camera and tell that story is it just natural now that you're just like, here's what we're doing and. There's a camera that just happens to be going along. Like, so if there's certain words get used, certain phrases, it doesn't matter. It's life. It, it's, it's how people are living. Uh, yes. It's, uh, I get, um, sometimes I'm a little corny. <laughs> and so some of, some of the gentlemen that watched the show uh, this past week, they were at the Toronto Sportsman Show, and I had a couple of guys come up and say, you know what, I love your show. I love what you do. You do amazing things for women in the outdoors and kids and everything else. It's like, but you could be a little corny and I'm like, yeah, but that's who I am. Yeah. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to turn into this, um, conserve conservative, like reserved serious person because I don't know how to be that person. So if I'm walking down a bush trail and all of a sudden I want to skip, I'm going to skip. And if they capture that on camera, then by all means, that's just who I am. If I tell a corny joke or if I laugh or giggle in a certain way, you know, that's, that's who I am. And, I think it's genuine and authentic. It is, and, and I think that that's the big takeaway, is just be yourself, whatever that might be, whatever interest that somebody has, uh, if not worry about what other people say, Never. whether it's your loved ones, whether it's not, whether it's a comment on, on a social media platform or in person, that if it's truly what you wanna do makes you happy, and it's you, that's that then that's all that matters. That's right. I mean, growing up, I was a tomboy. I had red hair. I was in a small community. There's only two redheads in the whole town. I was teased and bullied my whole life because I liked hanging out with the guys and I liked welding and, and being on dirt bikes and driving big trucks and fishing and hunting. But I had this crazy red hair and I got teased for that. And you know what? <laughs> Who cares? Who cares? Yeah. I. I like uh, I, I love all the branding that you have just in the shot that we have today. Uh, my I just started to get probably uh, a year ago or so get serious about the organization and being all in from okay this is something I do to this is something I do and I have to I have to live it and so if I am on a show or I'm driving my car, there's something with the brand, whether it's around the license plate or it's a, it's a pin, whatever that is, uh, that that's, you have to, again, this comes back to you gotta just embody that and, and live who 
who that brand is that you, you want it to be and, and not, to, not to worry. My wife, she jokes, she's like, why are you doing that? Like, why? You don't have to wear that. We're going to our daughter's tumbling class. You don't have to wear a branded hat or something. Sure you I'm do. Like, why not? Like, why? It's, it's self-promotion and it's pride. It's what you're proud of. It is, and it's free, especially like if you're already going to do something, like, why not? It, if I mean, even if you're obviously making a special effort to, to do something, but like, okay, if I'm already going to go do this thing, and I'm going to need to probably wear a shirt or a jacket or a hat, or, why not? And if I'm going to drive my car, why not have a license plate? If somebody stopped behind me, okay, maybe they look, maybe they don't, but they don't have a, the answer, again, is always, always going to be no if you don't have that option there. Um, and it's oh, yeah. especially, and I'm sure you can touch on it from being uh, most days a one person operation that you have to you have to take all the all the experiences and all the things and you have to just be bought in that if you're on a, a, our show or another show you're you're driving to or flying to your trade show and you're in the airport or you're at the gas station somebody see it it just makes that connection and maybe it happens that day or maybe it happens when they're flipping the channel a month or two later, and then they see your brand. They're like, "I saw her." I saw and, her? Yeah. And it's yeah. It, and it and it, and that's exactly what it is. I mean, I uh, had people come to the Toronto Sportsman Show just to see me. They said, "I came here just to meet you because I was watching you on TV, and you're in Toronto, uh, driving down the highway, and I stop at a gas station, and someone's like." You know, either they've watched the show before or they've never heard of it before. And they're like, what is Just Hunt? What is that hunting girl? So now you got a new viewer or a new follower yeah. or a new believer or whatever the case may be. And yeah, stickers, huge, huge. My truck is completely decked out with that hunting girl, Just Hunt. The trailer I pull is the same. All the, the ambassadors of the show when we're at trade shows, they all have Just Hunt on the front and their names are on the back that. of their shirts. So people can, they know who they are. It's important. Branding's important. It is. How, how important did social media become to your brand and your organization? Or, or maybe a better question, when did, when did you kind of feel that change coming? Or did it just happen over, over a period of time where you're like, okay, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be on LinkedIn and I'm going to be on Facebook and I'm going to do... It. And then when did it become maybe like a full time where you're consistently putting messages and content out? I've always been consistent, but when social media came out, it was 2007 when Facebook started and I was doing my fitness stuff. So the, um, the brand at the time was my name. Uh. So Amanda Lynn Mayhew was my brand mm -hmm. and it was done. It was in the fitness world and the outdoors industry. And then, so most of my social media platforms are my name. So LinkedIn is Amanda Lynn Mayhew, YouTube, TikTok, all of those things. Amanda Lynn Mayhew is the is like the the brand just hunt um over here mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> so incorporated is the company which um it uh the uh take me outreach programs runs under like on paperwork mm -hmm. um just hunt has um the outreach programs that hunting girl and then the clothing line so the three entities that run underneath just hunt incorporated but it they it's all attached to Amanda Lynn Mayhew. And so for social media, uh, I when Twitter started, I jumped on. When LinkedIn started, I jumped on. When Instagram, I jumped on. When they all started, I was just, just kept on going because at the time when all of the social media platforms were getting going, I was not quite as busy as I am now and yeah. I had time for all of that stuff. Yeah. But then I needed content to add to all of these things. And I've just kind of been getting a little bit busier on LinkedIn mm -hmm. over the last couple of years. Didn't really know how to use that platform at first. Um, same with TikTok. That's in incredibly hard for me to use because most of my adventures, I end up um, ending someone's or ending an animal's life. Mm -hmm. So TikTok doesn't like that. So you have to be very creative on that platform. But yeah, I've, I've been on every platform and it, um, people people search. They tend to search Amanda and Mayhew more than they search Just Hunt. So And they kind of run together so they get to the same place depending on which which way yeah uh, how there's a couple like there's okay. there's a just hunt instagram page and a just hunt tiktok and a just hunt facebook page 
Okay. But I mean, for the most part, people want to talk to a mandolin me. They don't want to talk to just us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how important is consistency? And just like as, as an organization uh, across it, it, like colors of the logo and, and, and those things from like a branding perspective that if they see just hunt and it has that logo in the middle between just and hunt, that if they see a sticker or they see a flag or they see a poster or they see your shirt or a hat, uh, how important is there to be some level of consistency? Obviously, there'll be changes from that, but from you know that initial it's person, very that, important. Very important. It's very important. You, I mean, just like Nike, just yeah. like any you know any other company. So that logo there is the first. This is all backwards. Yeah, <laughs> that's you the first it. logo, and in the middle of it is a bear paw with bear strong because the bear strong. Um, meaning of inner strength came from back in the fitness days. So I carried it on and I merged it with the just hunt. So in order to do the things that I did back in the day, I needed to be as strong as I possibly can. So I merged those together and created that logo. So my background is marketing and graphics, uh, yeah. which helps. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so I'm, I'm the one that does the website, all the write-ups. I write for different magazines as well. Um, I'm very creative in writing and graphics, photography, videography, all of those things. It's all me that does that. And uh, I have variations of my logo. I've done a couple just to kind of freshen things up. Now and then there's hat right yep. there that has kind of like a retro logo on it. Mm -hmm. And so we have a lot of, we, me, yeah. I have a lot of fun redesigning and playing with it. But yes, like the this is all backwards. Mm -hmm. That hunting girl logo stays the same because it's still fresh. It's only four years old. And so you want people to, to just like see it and go, oh, yeah, it's that, that's that hunting girl. And then maybe in a year or two, we can change the color or do something a little bit different to it. But um, it you need to be consistent, especially in the beginning, mm -hmm. so that it, um, it sticks. So... The, Every company does it, but then every company has a variation of it. Variation. So what has surprised you? Was it how, how known you were being in the U.S. Uh, versus <laughs> what you ha had thought? And I, I, oh, I guess yeah. that's got to be, I, I'm just thinking of a band, and they, they travel overseas, and they might, I mean, I'm sure they have people to tell them how well like they are and how uh, uh, yeah, well, like they are, but when they actually get there and see like the actual response to them, was it that in general su surprising or maybe how enthusiastic they were? Because somebody could be like, okay, I, yeah, I know her. I, I, know the, I know the brand, but then be like, oh my gosh, <laughs> that's her. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy. So, um, I mean, I did trade shows across Canada for many years and people were all always excited to come and see me but they knew me from social media mm -hmm. so now with the TV thing like I went to BC um, the BC outdoor show last year I was actually quite surprised that people were like oh my god I love your show and I'm like you watch my show in BC <laughs> like, what's happening here and then um, driving to Nashville and, and getting to the Safari Club International and just walking through the booth Usually I don't wear my, or walking through the, the mm -hmm. show, I usually don't wear my glasses. Okay. Um, normally I have a hat on. Like, mm -hmm. normally I have, like, a trade show costume, yeah. you know, where people can recognize me. I was walking through like this, and people were like, hey, Amanda, how's it going? Oh, my God, I can't believe you're here. And I'm like, wow, what's happening? And, uh, yeah, it's it, it, it was very surprising. I have shot in the States a couple of times, mm -hmm. and I am really good at social media, and I'm really good at... Um, sharing my travels and where I've been, who I've been with and my experiences. And I do connect with a lot of different people and SHOT Show in Vegas is a really big deal for that. The more that you tour, the more that you make personal appearances at events, the more that you, you know, go places and, and meet people, the more you're going to get out there in the first place. So, um, like I go to Chuck Norris's kickstart kids gala event in Houston. I've, been invited since I told my story about the total gym back in 2010 or 11 mm. and uh you know meeting meeting Chuck Norris are you kidding me <laughs> right <laughs> like, that's awesome. and um and and just having him as like 
an acquaintance now um, and going to places where like he was at SHOT Show a couple of years ago and I was there. And for whatever reason, I told myself I had to stand in line for an autograph. And this guy in front of me was being quite rude, telling me that, no, that the, that the line ends with him. Oh. And I'm like, wait a second here, <laughs> standing in line. Right. So I went around the news and I seen the security guard, his uh, body bodyguard, and he recognized me from the Kickstarter Kids Gala. Uh-huh. So he's like, hey, you know, come on in, blah, 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 blah. And I was a little bit of a smarty pants. And... <laughs> We, we exchanged autographs and pictures and Chuck's wife, Gina, was there. And uh, then I went back around the booth and tapped the guy on the shoulder and showed him my picture. <laughs> it's like, bye. Yeah, like, bye. <laughs> so, the more that you get out there and the more you attend different events and trade shows, and even if you're a, a patron or a spectator or whatever, the more you get an opportunity to meet people, you never know what's going to happen. That's true. And I think... Touching on you know having you having that shyness at a certain point and myself being I thought I was an extrovert my psychiatrist thought I was an introvert he's like no no you're an introvert but there's times where you can I guess turn it on and it comes natural teaching and and speaking and and having a, the podcast and that was even for me being 41 years old like it was just eye opening to to hear that and I had always been uh, well he had asked. You know, what, what do you do like kind of like in your spare time like when you're, you're not doing you're not busy you're not out and about and I was like well oh, I like to read I like to, he goes see he's like you don't like to like go to the coffee shop and like just meet people no. and, like, and, like, and like no and I think that's that's important and I think interesting for people to uh the, the viewers and listeners to to, to see and, and hear your your story of you can you can be shy and you can still do things that are helpful to yourself and, and your brand. And the more that you, you get out, even if it's not what, you know, somebody comparing somebody that's been in the industry for like 50 years versus, okay, I'm in year two and I'm trying to compare myself. Like, well, I'm probably not going to be able to go to the amount of shows and, and, and amount of locations and, and adventures uh, because I'm just starting out and having that, that thought is helpful, just a level set of, okay, it's okay. I don't have to compare myself to the Nikes or uh, you know, the Apples of the world that I can, to your point, just be yourself, be who you are. And that, that will lead to where it's meant, meant to be. And I'm guessing that's how when the TV show started, a connection, it, it was through some type of networking that happened that brought that opportunity to you Versus if you hadn't had an opportunity or hadn't networked at that particular time, you may not have had that opportunity. Is that fair to say? Yeah, it's true. And I never, never set out to do this. So it was just the, it's just what happened. It's just how the path created itself, so to speak. I just kept rolling with it. I mean, if I hadn't shot that 10 point buck as my first deer in 2009, I wouldn't have been in the monster big tail or monster white tail magazine. Um, I wouldn't have been recognized by people in the industry. Oh, here's this, this girl, she's harvesting these big animals and she's been doing this for a long time. Why are we just recognizing this now? And you know what I mean? Like, and then, yeah, you just, yeah. And the biggest slogan I have is be real, be strong, be you. I took it from my fitness world mm-hmm. and I incorporated it into my hunting world. And it's, it basically says everything. Just be yourself. Fantastic. Uh, we're getting getting low on time, so I definitely wanted to, to give you an opportunity to, to hit all your your, uh, your platforms and how people can learn more about you, get your merchandise. Uh, check out uh, trade shows and just be abreast of the, the, the TV show and, and all those things. So if you want to do your plugs. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so if you go to www.justhunt.ca, it will actually give you all of everything that you need to know about the retreats, the outreach programs, the clothing line, all the social media platforms are right there nice and easy underneath the picture. Um, you can watch all the old episodes on YouTube. The new season drops on March 27th on Sportsman Channel. Uh, there's a free preview in Canada. 
and it, there's a personal appearance list of all the trade shows and events that I will be attending. And everything is right there, nice and clean on justhunt.ca. One, one place, everything together, concise, using some of that marketing and <laughs> of uh, one place, <laughs> not multiple places. Well, yeah. Amanda, Lynn, Mayhew, thank you so much for, for joining us today. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a pleasure to, to meet you, even though it's vir virtually. Uh, at, at some point, I'll, I'm sure we'll, we'll connect at one of your, one of your shows and, or one of your, your experiences. And I uh, just want to say congratulations, like where you're at now and what you've accomplished. And uh, very inspirational to not only the viewers, but just to, to, to myself of just talking to, to another like-minded person that is doing it and it's doing what they're doing what they they love to do and they're they're doing it them themselves and the authentic part is is huge there was so many scripted even TikTok videos and it, it, so many things are so scripted and using and soundtracks from songs to to bring energy the, the fact that you're just being keeping <laughs> keeping it real, uh, trying. Uh, trying to keep <laughs> it real uh, is, is very refreshing. And uh, want to again just say thank you so much for your for your time and uh, yeah, <laughs> it's just very much appreciated. Thank you, thank you for having me on the show. It's been so much fun, uh, and I got to learn about you too. Uh, so. <laughs> thank you. Well, I'll just I'll read a little bit at the end, and then maybe we grab a couple pictures uh, for for today. Then I'll shoot them your way, and then I'll I'll let you know when it when it airs. Uh, sure. Today. Great. Well, thank you, our audience, our viewers, our listeners, for joining us on this episode of the Voices for Voices podcast, and a huge thank you to our special guest today, Amanda Lynn Mayhew, for spending time with us today. Uh, a lot of time. Uh, she's very busy and, and in demand. So until next time, I am Justin Allen Hayes, and I hope you have a great day and be a voice for you or somebody in need.